Hey, and welcome back to Herb Leathercraft. I'm Dan, and today what I'm going to be covering is some uh, leather handle wraps. I recently received some tools off of Amazon uh, for modeling, but this can be applied pretty much to any tool if you want a softer, more supple handle that gives you lots of grip, and we'll get into it now. Okay, so some of the tools I'm going to need today. Right now we're going to need some needles and some thread. I'm going to make some holes with the diamond punches. You're gonna need a knife. And these are the tools that I'm actually gonna make a new handle on. We'll get into that. And you're also gonna need some leather. So this, uh, for, for handles like this, I wouldn't use your good quality vegetable tan. I would just use a chrome tan, as long as it's not too acidic and it doesn't affect your, your, your handles. Okay, so I will see you in a few minutes and we'll get into the project. Okay, so what I'm gonna need to do is uh, actually first get my measurement on how much distance I need around this. Uh, now this chrome tan is actually quite flexible, so I'm gonna make it slightly smaller. I'm actually gonna measure the circumference of the metal portion, not the plastic portion, and then I'm gonna tighten it around the plastic and it'll make it uh, that much tighter. So all I'm going to do right now, and the easiest way to do this, is use a piece of thread on the metal, wrap it around, get that point where you're going to cut it, and this is going to give, this is going to give our thickness for how wide we need our leather. So I'm gonna cut that off on my mat. Now that I have my little piece, I can actually go to a ruler and get a proper measurement. So I'm gonna go with five eighths as a safe measurement. And because I'm covering three tools, I'm going to mark off three five-eighths lines. So we'll do a start point for this. I'm just going to use a fine point. So start point, five-eighths. going to try to square these up. So the first one I'm going to do, I'm just going to make a cut straight across. Get rid of the scrap. Now that I have a square edge, this edge as well. Now I'm using my cutting mats lines here so I'm hoping they're quite accurate. Now that we have those I can verify on this side that I was straight. Yeah, and it looks like that was a pretty good measurement. Now I'm simply going to match up the two edges. Oh, it's a good thing I don't need it too long. Thank you. 
Okay. So now I have my three pieces. Now I'm going to measure the length that I want. So I want it to just cover this tip here. And then I'm going to bring it up to that chamfer maybe just a little past. So I'm going to cut Now I'd prefer the suede style side out, so I'm going to wrap it. But I need to punch holes all along this side because that's what's going to actually stitch together and tighten it around the tool. So I'm going to get my punch pad. And now I'm simply going to punch holes along the edge all the way up. So one side's punched. See them easier on the back side. And we're gonna move on to the other. You'll notice with this thin chrome tanned, it's bending as I go. It's because I'm spreading the material. Won't be a big deal once you get this all done. Now I'm actually gonna use a baseball stitch on this. And I'll show you that when I get to it. It's good for cinching together the leather material. Around an object. Well, this should be the last punch. Okay. So, holes are punched, now I simply have to put it on. So that'll be setting my tool in. I'm going to have to thread up my, my needles. So I'll thread up my needles and I'll come back when we're ready to go. Threaded back up as per before. Um, remember, last time I uh, made a mistake on my video about thread length. Try to do three times the length of your stitches. So, to start a baseball stitch, we're basically going to go through our first holes. On either side. And I want that side in. Then I'm going to place my tool in roughly where I want it. I'll be able to adjust it for the first bit. And then center my threads. Tool in. Roughly there. And then it's going to be to the next hole, but under, Just like that. And I'm going under, drawing through, and then the same on the other side, under, drawing through. Getting this started can be a little bit of a pain. Once I have it where I want it, if I can pick my thread back up, we're just going to pull that tight, get that over that corner, corner back through, and then tighten it down. And that's going to create a nice stitch that's going to hold quite well. And then I'm going to carry that on down. So over the outside and then through the next hole underneath 
tightening it down every time. And you'll see eventually I've used a fairly dark stitch, but we're gonna get this nice cross stitch like uh, on baseballs. So I'll carry this on, probably speed this up so you don't get too bored. Again, I'm always starting from one side and working to the other. So if I'm starting my stitch, I'm always starting it from this side, working to that side, and then I use the other one to come back across that way. So these have to be tightened quite a bit to get that on. As you go, you're going to want to retighten to make sure that you have a nice solid grip. So to keep this short, I'm only going to do the one the one tool on camera because uh, you don't really need to see me stitch for an hour. bring this up closer so you can see what this actually looks like uh, this way so you get that nice cross stitch and it brings it in nice and tight This thin leather, you'll see that that two stitches ago actually broke through. So it's easier if you're using a little bit of a better quality leather. This is just fairly cheap leather that I picked up quite a while back before I knew what I was doing. Just because I like the uh, inner flesh side surface. It won't affect it too badly. And it's a nice looking stitch when it's done. Probably could have gone with a little more material just to uh, so that you couldn't see the, the steel in there because I think you're going to be able to see a little bit of that steel especially where that stitch popped. But it won't affect the use it'll just affect the look because this is a tool I'm not too concerned about the looks or concerned about the function that it actually holds in place What I'll do is once this is completely done, I'll come back and show you the finished project and you'll see like this doesn't slide. It will not slide. So um, really good tool finishing uh, and I'll show you when they're done and how good this will work. Okay, see you in a bit. So now that I'm all done, well, all I have left is to burn some threads. I actually uh, tried it the other way. I actually kind of like that. 
So I restarted and uh, switched it to this side, punched the holes a little further in. Still had one stitch pop, um, but yeah, that looks pretty nice. Uh, if there was a little more material, you wouldn't see any of the shiny there. But that'll, uh, that'll work nice. Much better than this. Um, so I've got two more to do. I'm not going to show them on camera. It's kind of a waste of your time. All right. Again, I want to thank you for coming to Herb Leather Craft and sharing that project with me. I know this one was quick. It's probably good that it was nice and quick. Um, but if you found any use in this, I'd like you to at least subscribe so that you're going to get notified the next time I produce any content. Uh, as well as hit that thumbs up if you found any value in this. Uh, if you guys end up doing any of the leather wrapping of your handles, please send in a, uh, a comment or whatever and link in your video so that I can see it as well. I'm uh, really interested in seeing how you guys are progressing as well.